teaching an attractive career choice. There are concerns this morning that most people only see the profession as a fallback job and it's leading to a teacher drought. Let's get today's take on this with Shelley Horton of Shell Shocked Media, Andrew Bucklow from news.com.au. Shell, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I know that your parents are teachers. Yeah. Um, I think it's about time we started to adopt those sort of Swedish systems where we pay our teachers pay what they them need to be well. paid. That's how you're going to get people like this study saying, oh, male teachers like to have leadership roles, so therefore, or to be a specialist teacher, like a PE teacher. How about we put some bucks in there and you're going to get a lot more people interested. It shouldn't be seen as a community service. Yeah. It's a career and it's vital for our country. So therefore, let's put some money behind it. Uh, Bucky, how do we encourage people to, to more people to go into teaching? Well, yeah, as you guys were saying, more money, I think, but also just kind of encouraging it when kids are at school as a viable option for them to do in the future. But yeah, as you said, it's all about the money. Yeah. I mean, electricians are making more money than teachers when they graduate from TAFE. And, and so. we're always talking about Gonski and reforms and reforms to the education department. But we're never talking about the teachers. We're only ever no. talking about the students and the results that teachers bring or schools bring. And the results should be if you pay people, they're going to want to go to this job. And how about if you have higher quality people there because you've got the money, you'll get better results because you're going to have really committed teachers who love what they're doing and therefore they're going to pour everything into the kids. And how about the perks? The holidays are amazing, right? <laughs> well, they do have to work through some of the holidays. Yeah, but they, yeah, they do yeah, get a lot Yeah, but can I say, as a kid who grew up with parents who were both teachers, that meant they had every single school holiday they with us oh, right. and then dad also taught at my school. Oh. I was about to say, did That's you, not are cool. you one of those teachers goes like, oh god I got dad's class today. Yeah. Is that awkward? Oh, it's so awkward Ooh. and also I could never get away with saying, oh no I don't have any homework. <laughs> no. Actually yes you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> right. Also making news today, shocking dash cam footage has captured the heart stopping moment a truck ploughed into a scooter. Uh, it appears as though the truck driver oh. Oh. was oblivious to the rider who was waiting at the lights. He sideswipes the man before driving off uh, but the incident has people questioning who is in the wrong here so Bucky the scooter was in the middle of the mm. lanes and apparently the truck driver couldn't see him so who do you think is at fault well you know this video was originally posted on YouTube and the description says that the scooter driver was lane filtering now that's where they kind oh, of sneak, sneak up in the middle yeah when and now whenever that happens in traffic I get very nervous because you can understand how maybe the truck driver didn't actually see him you don't know what lane exactly they're in it did look like he might have been on his mobile phone or distracted the scooter driver so can you see that again I'm going to see his head's um, down it's, when you look yeah. at it at the start. I'm going to have to go on the truck side here. Shelley, can we, uh, let's have a look at it again. I don't see a phone. Uh, look, uh, Shelley, I, I'm, I'm going to say that's not that big a truck that he can't see him. Yeah, also, my husband rides a motorbike, which is quite terrifying. But when you call, say, call it lane filtering, that's legal. They are actually right. allowed to do that. You're not allowed to go on the outside of the lane. But if you're in the middle, it is completely oh, legal. legal. Right. Completely legal. Because I've David, had many David, arguments say, with him about you it. How many trucks have you driven? <laughs> oh, let's go back to that. <laughs> okay, none, uh, right? None. Zero. So my dad was a truck driver. <laughs> right. And, and I remember, like, things ha happened. Like, when you're turning a corner, do you ever undertake or, you know, try to get around a truck as it's turning a corner? You just no, shouldn't do it because right. they don't have the same... But you'd be surprised, the people that actually yeah. do it. And it's, you know... It's I just wanted to see a different opinion. I, really <laughs> I, I mean, look, I mean, I don't know. So who's in the your right time on there. the road. Your yeah, Dave, <laughs> my, my time as a truck driver. Convoy. Yeah. Hey, Ramadan. Break a break. We've got an idiot on the road. Uh, uh, yeah, that'd be me. Uh, look, we. I don't look. No, I, but I, let us know at home. What do you, you think? You, the way you looked at it. Do you think that? Oh, I just right? think. Look, where trucks are concerned, give them a wide berth. It's like buses. You know, like why would yeah. you? Don't even try. Don't try to sneak up beside a truck or a bus or anything that's that big. You're crazy to do that. When you're this leg. high and the truck's yeah, that high, then there is going to be a visibility exactly. issue. Exactly. Right. Right. Protect well. yourself. <laughs> Protect yourself. All right, Shelley and Andrew are going to stay with us because when we come back, how soon is too soon to say, I love you? <laughs> you won't believe how long some people wait before dropping the L word. Stay with us. I love you. Come back. I love you. <laughs> Gonna get silly. How soon is too soon to say I love you? 
According to a new <laughs> survey, 22% of us wait two to three months before dropping the L word. Mm. Sensible. Sure. Right? Uh, surprisingly, <laughs> though, 16% declare their feelings in just a matter of weeks. Needy. David. <laughs> then there are those who like to draw it out with 14% admitting to waiting six months before saying those three little words and 2% of those surveyed waited a staggering two years because the first to say it loses. <laughs> <laughs> Shelley Horton still here from Shell Shock Media. Andrew Bucklow from news.com.au. Shelley, yeah. how long does it take to say I love you? Well, with my husband it was about four weeks. And I had to ask him this morning, I'm like, who said it first? And he went, I totally said it first, but only when I knew you'd say it back. Like, he was oh, like, yeah, I was making true. sure about that. Out there. But I've got a girlfriend who's now married to this man, but he took two years to say it, and we we're all like, deal breaker. That's, that's like holding out. I think that's emotional abuse, no way. The Whoa. funny thing is, Bucky, both times, David said it in a couple of weeks, Shelley said it in a couple of weeks, both I'm times crazy. I heard you going... <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe, like, this is why I'm the only single person here, yeah. but, uh, I don't know, 3% of the people surveyed said it within the first week. Mm. I mean, yeah, that just that is terrifying. I actually yeah. work with a, a girl, and I was chatting to her this morning. She doesn't want me to name her name, but Bronte Coy Bronte. told me that she was... Um, <laughs> she got told on the very first date. <gasps> Oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, surely you just get up and run out of the restaurant when <laughs> yes. that happens. No, yes. I've done first yes. dates where I've brought suitcases and, and like, half my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I would think, you know, Hi. four to five, Hi, maybe six you. months. Yeah. No, what? that's too long. Is you, it? When you know, you know. I'm I think Shelley. it's yeah, but you, might know, wait, you don't have to blurt it out. Yes, because you by do. doing that, you run the risk you're of them the deal. of scaring that person. <laughs> no, right you're not out romantics, you're needy freaks, is what you're you are. Okay. Well, yeah. Hang on, <laughs> hang on a minute. Yeah. When was the last time you said I love you? Uh, I don't know if I ever have, to be honest. See? Oh, wait a See, second. That means here. that when the right person comes along, it will mean something. Yeah. Oh, like, as long as there's a three to six month waiting period well, has know, been adhered to. I've got a date tonight, so maybe I'll try it tonight. Just we'll see how it goes. Let yeah. it out. Come like back Janet and just said back. it then. She, she just, let's bring up Janet again. She said she said her husband said it <laughs> on the first, the first night. night. 23 years later, 23 they're still years. together. See, See Janet, you're my know. hero. Mm, sounds know. like an arranged marriage, that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bucky. Bucky, come on, you. you need to grow a heart, man. <laughs> OK. Not just in a science lab or a test tube, a proper yeah. heart. All right, hit me up, AC Buckle on Twitter. Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So can you live tweet tonight and <laughs> hashtag us all in so okay. that we can see what happens? Let us know. When was, that, when was the earliest you said, I love you? The earliest. Yeah? Mm. Not drunk. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you. Thanks, Shelley. Thank you for that, Bucky. Still to come, forget Paris, why Korea...